Welcome back to RD Works Learning Lab. Um, today we're still on the subject of mirrors. I'm a little bit obsessed with the fact that I'm losing so much power with my mirrors and one of the claims is that the hard disk in here makes a wonderful mirror. It's coated with cobalt as the final stage. I've not been able to find any reflectance values for cobalt um, and it's not a material that's normally used for mirrors. Today we're going to experiment making some mirrors with a hard disk. The thing is you must get a proper large hard disk, not one of these small hard disks that comes out of a, uh, out of a laptop because they're probably made of glass or some sort of other material which will shatter when you try and work with it. The hard disks in these should be aluminium. You need a little mini Torx driver to get these out. If you feel around the label you'll find that there is another hole. So you'll need to pick the label off in that area because underneath you'll find there's one more screw which is covered up which stops you taking the lid off. Prizing the cover off. I don't think there's any more. Let's just check to make sure there's no more screws underneath there. No, that's correct. But there's sometimes a couple of dowels to locate and it may well be that it has a a rubber seal underneath which is stuck down so you might have to just prise it off a little bit there we go yeah there's a there's a seal around the edge there look so that's what's keeping it stuck on and here we are it's as simple as that oh we're lucky with this one this one's got three platters in it. Different manufacturers fix their discs on in completely different ways. To do now. Right, let's see what happened now. We've taken the last screw out. Looks as though it's all going to come apart in my hands with a bit of luck. There's the first disc. If I can take this arm assembly off then the whole thing will come to pieces. And here we've got some nice shiny material now for um, making some mirrors. So here are some standard M5, what they call penny washers, which happen to be about 24.8 millimetres diameter. And what I've done to one of them is to put a hank bush, which is a press nut, into that penny washer. I've modified the washer with a slightly bigger hole and pushed one of those in. I've got here double-sided tape, very high bond strength. Here I've got a tape. sanding disc, but it's one of those sanding discs with a nice soft back that attaches to Velcro pad. And I'm going to use that as a protection for the surface. I'm going to hold that in a vise and we're going to be a little bit brutal with it. Okay, we'll have attached it to our little stem now and what I'm going to do is just trim the excess off and there we go we've just got some little corners to tip off now to do the final stages and get it nice and round I'm just going to do this cheap When I can see sparks, I know that I'm cutting the steel disc. And there we go, one perfect shiny mirror. Okay, so before we start doing any tests with the hard disc mirror, we'll just do a test with the copper mirror as a starting point. That's maxed out at about 31.6. As I tried to demonstrate, uh, during my session on mirrors just because it's shiny doesn't mean to say it's reflective in the infrared and put this hard disk mirror in I haven't been able to find anything about the reflectivity of cobalt so this is stepping into the unknown. So this will be the first test I haven't even checked whether the beam is going to come out the middle of the nozzle yet but I think it is well it's transmitting something. Didn't quite make 29, I would say it was 28.8. .8. 
So that's almost 3 watts less, which is about 10% down. So as an emergency mirror, yeah, it would do the job. Um, and it's free. If you've got lots of watts, then maybe you ought to make your own. But I think I'll stick with the copper mirror at the moment. And fairly crudely, there we go. Look, so I've got another 1.4 watts with my copper mirror as opposed to the original Molly mirror. And the hard disk, well, the hard disk mirror 28.8. I'm still going to do a little bit of work, further work, on the copper mirror, I think, because that shows the most promise for dragging me up a little bit more. So I've got one of my original copper mirrors here, and if you look carefully, oh look, you can see it lovely there, it's nicely scratched across the surface. And that was actually in the machine at one stage, doing a half reasonable job. But we've got a double whammy here, we've got some 800 wet and dry and some polish at the same time. And what I'm attempting to do here is to actually just flatten the mirror out. What I've got here is I've got an old surface plate. This wasn't an inspection surface plate, this was just a, a hard surface for people to work on. I've covered that over with a piece of macrolon, 6mm macrolon, which has basically got a nice flat surface on it. So I'm trying to keep the load in the middle there. I want to take all those deep scratches out. I think I have actually. Now we'll go on to phase two. We'll just remove any aggressive abrasive. And we'll use some of this Meguiar's NXT Next Generation. All metal polish. We'll pop some of this on the surface here. And again, keeping pressure in the middle to try and keep this surface as flat as possible. I'll just work it round. I can feel it's floating around like it's floating on ice. And I'll keep going because at a given point in time it will all of a sudden when I've managed to squeeze all the paste out, it'll start to go a bit sticky and a bit... Um... At the moment it's a nice smooth matte finish. So now we're back to our piece of cloth. This is a piece of uh, flannelette sheeting, would you believe? And I'm just coating the surface of it with some of the same blue paste that we were using just here. And this time, because we're doing it on a soft surface, as opposed to a hard surface, I hope that we should be able to get the good polish up without destroying the flatness. And if we now take a look at that, you'll see if I can catch straight lines in it. It's reasonably flat curves out just towards the edge but in the middle it produces reasonably parallel lines which is where we're going to be working and it's certainly nicely polished. So we're straight back to the machine with our newly polished copper lens 20 milliamps 31 point So, so, so for five minutes worth of polishing that mirror I'm already at least a watt more than the standard Molly mirror. Looks as though I could do a little bit more polishing on that and maybe get that up to the same as the other one. So that's the second copper mirror. I've got a third mirror that I will make. Now you saw me in the video, the previous video, a little bit hacksaw happy with my access at the front here. I've got myself just a little um, door that I've put on here now that allows me to go in there and get access to all my settings. I've now just modified all my thumb screws here and put screwdriver slots in them so that they're easy to adjust. Well, because I've been changing the mirrors so often with my experimentation, 
um, and if I keep my copper, copper mirrors in then I might need to take them out regularly to polish them but uh, what I've done I've been hacksaw happy on the back of my machine as well and I've made myself a little access area here so that I can get to all my screws so while I'm going to reset all my mirrors soon I might as well change the tube clamps as well